We're at Lake Rant, the place in which I desperately and blatantly steal Digibro's ideas to rant about topics for money. This rant comes in from Anime Watcher, who wants me to rant about the man himself, uh, Digibro. Digibro's uh, coverage that has been done by that anime snob. That anime snob's coverage of Digibro. Um, I don't think there's very much to say about it, because I feel like snob, you know, snob is a guy who comes from a very, very different era of the internet. Uh, he comes from, you know, a time in which uh, slanderous uh, kind of behavior was just normal, you know, in, in which uh, just saying points about someone that are just demonstrably incorrect and obviously incorrect to everybody isn't considered to be like a red flag you know, a time in which the individual was treated as the monolith online. You did things because you had the knowledge that everyone was anonymous and you're going to continue doing things because everyone is anonymous, not the other way around. Um, and in a way, I think there's a certain power to his words because of that, because he just doesn't care. He's going to continue covering the things that he covers in the way that he does because he just doesn't care. Because that sort of brazen, arrogant attitude um, is not going to be considered a, a problem, um, you know, back then. And, and the mindset that he has just comes from that time. And I mean, I don't think his opinions are going to change either, because at this point, he's just so old that like his opinions have completely solidified to the point that it doesn't really matter what you say to him because he's always just going to think the same things. Um, and I mean, even if there was a will for him to change his views on Digi's content, he's always going to be stuck in this, this like, you know, pre 4chan, early 4chan mindset of just saying things in the most brazen and unhinged way for the sake of saying them, for the sake of debate. I mean, if you listen to when that anime snob showed up on Neotaku, um, the fact that he was talking with other people in a podcast setting, I think, drastically changed the way that he talked. He sounded down to earth. You know, he was he was talking about how his upbringing influenced the opinions that he has now. He talked about how, you know, the reason that he likes action shows isn't really because action shows are just inherently better, which is a criticism that he would make in his actual video series against Digibro, that action series are better because of plot, because of these objective measurements, and Digibro is wrong for not understanding that fact. But when you listen to him in this podcast, he sounds down to earth. He sounds like when he says these things, he's saying them more as a joke than as his actual assessment of Digi's content. He disagrees with them, sure, disagrees with them vehemently, strongly, whatever word you want to use, but it's not in the most brazen, mimetic way that he presents it. Those things are a meme, you know, by nature. That's what they are, because that's how the old internet operated. Um, but when you listen to him in this podcast, he says... The reason I like action shows is because I grew up with them. And the reason you probably don't is because you grew up with something else. That's just typically how people view things. That's typically how they are. And uh, I think there was a certain power to listening to that show because very rarely, if ever, is he shouting or calling people casuals in a room full of people, many of them trans even, and he's kind of like a red pillar guy, um, in a room of people who disagree with him on just about everything. All of them are Digibro-inspired people. Um, all of them have very, very different favorite shows. And yet he's just having a rational discourse with them about his personal preferences. Snob is a character. He acts as a character. He debates with people as a character. That's what his primary motive is. Does he have these opinions? Yes. But are they really as extreme as they are in reality? I tend to doubt that. Because you know, when listening to that podcast or other shows that he's guest on, he seems significantly less brazen and reasonable enough to admit that the claims that he makes come from, ultimately, his upbringing and his personal experiences. These are just not notions that he would present in his normal videos. He would just act as brazen as he could and shout and scream and say, I'm objectively right. It's pretty clear to me that he doesn't believe that. Um, I mean, as, as for... As for the actual assessment of Digi's content that he has, um, I think it's just kind of silly. Like, he says that Digi's videos uh, 
are too long winded and don't um, make enough points. They just kind of repeat the same point over and over because they are that long and that, uh, you know, density and, and uh, brev- brevity, brevity is the key, uh, is the, is the key to wit, you know, that that's, that's what wit is, is that the shortest way you could possibly say something is the best way. However, the problem with this claim is that it lacks substance. It believes that to say something in a short way is inherently more good when if you're saying something in a short way, uh, you know, with as few words as possible and there's no substance to it, then that's not wit, you know, that brevity is not the soul of wit when you're being, um, you know, when you're using brevity in your speech, when you're being very short, um, but what you're saying has no substance to it. So that wouldn't be the soul of wit because you know, there's no wit to what it is that you're saying, which is what I feel when I watch a lot of his videos, he's just kind of shouting and saying things without those claims really being substantiated or having much of a back or foundation to them. Whereas with Digi, he's very dense. He makes a lot of points. It's not that he makes, you know, uh, you know, one point that he just repeats over and over. I think in some of the videos that he did in 2015 and 2014, there definitely was too much repetition and they could have been tightened up. But by and large, the reason why they're long is not because they're repeating the same point. It's because they're making a lot of points. Um, You know, his whole assessment on cute girl shows just being inherently bad, uh, I think is wrong because cute girl shows are about the characters. It's about being able to understand the themes through watching the characters interact. You can't have good themes without having good characters, because the characters are ultimately going to inform the message of the series. Is the message in, um, is the message of the series interesting? Sure, it may be, but how is it conveyed? The way it's going to be conveyed is ultimately through the characters. The characters are, um, I'm trying to think of the word I'm, I want to use here, uh, they're like they're like epochs or 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 um, something that carries something. What is the word? Something that carries information. Uh, they're, they're basically, so you think of a train track, right? The story is a train track. Now the story, the themes are on the train track, but the actual train, the actual train that moves forward are the characters. Yeah, the train track may be an element of it, you know, the themes are going to ultimately be informed by the things that are put in them. I'm talking about the train riding on the train track, but, but the thing that's ultimately moving are the characters. They both inform one another, but one, one is going to be the primary thing that communicates the idea. The, what was the word? They're like, they're like radio signals. What was the, I'm getting, I'm getting too far off in my analogy. Basically the characters communicate the themes, right? Um, I got so hum- hung up on that one word that I wanted to use. Um, like, the characters communicate the themes, so you can't have a good plot or good themes or just focus on any one individual element. No one individual element is more important than the other because all of them play into one another. You need characters to communicate themes, you need characters to communicate plot, you need a plot to communicate characters. Um, and you need an aesthetic to communicate all of these things. I mean, what does an aesthetic do besides communicate more about what you're feeling? And what does the feeling do than add more to the story as a whole? I mean, Serial Experiments Lane, I mean, you can find any one image from that show that speaks a thousand words about who the characters are and what the themes are and, and you know, what the, the story was meant to be telling you thematically, characteristically, um, aesthetically all of them play into one another so you can't decide one element is better than the other you have to have all of them in order to create a story that communicates one idea or many ideas um and so the problem with that anime snob is that he's one-sided in his views you know he thinks well cute girl shows are bad because they don't have enough plot the characters are the plot the aesthetic is the plot all of the elements play into one another to create some something bigger, something bigger than any of those one individual elements. Um, So uh, I think his assessment is just kind of wrong, but I think he's a down to earth guy. Like, I don't think snob is like a bad person. I don't like these people who shit on snob all the time and say, Oh, snob is terrible. I actually like a lot of his videos. I think snob can be really funny. Um, You know, he's very good at like 
making a lot of the same jokes over and over again and still being able to make them funny. Um, and uh, I don't know, some of his videos can be pretty fun. I think he's actually pretty good at writing. Like when Snob has something to say, um, he can be pretty good at communicating that point. It's just that a lot of his videos don't really say anything. Um, and a lot of them, I don't agree with most of the stuff he says, but watching his videos can sometimes be interesting, especially the slice of life, nothing happens videos where he's like walking around Greece or Bulgaria. I love those videos. It's like you're peering into the mind of just a cynical guy. Um, especially the videos from that arc from where he was like really depressed. Um, I felt like I was, I was learning more about him as a person and, um, being able to empathize better with what opinions he holds and um, just how people can be in general. You know, learning more about Snob kind of helps me learn more about certain uh, other people who may be similar in the world. So I think that's nice. Um, I, I just, I disagree with his assessment. I think a lot of the stuff he's saying um, just kind of, you know, even as he's basically said is that he just has different tastes. He comes from a different era on the internet. He comes from a different era of anime. You know, he stayed up and watched pirated airings of of uh, anime on Greek television in the 80s. You know, and back then it was it was all action shows that were really cool because everyone was afraid of the Cold War happening. Um, and so it was about fighting and stuff. Now that's the mindset he comes from. And I can respect that, even though I may disagree with his stances that he holds. It, it's kind of coming from coming at things from a different generation's perspective. And... Uh, in a lot of ways, I think the humor that he uses in his videos is kind of refreshing because, you know, this this kind of this idea of, of everyone being so sensitive and always needing all of their points to be 100 percent understood. The idea of people just needing to follow this strict guideline about speech that everyone just wants to hold on the Internet as the Internet becomes more like real life. Um, I feel like takes away some of the fun of trolling takes away some of the fun of just being a brazen, you know, elastic personality the way that uh, Snob is. So I respect his work because of that. I respect the fact that he's been doing it for so long. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I disagree with his videos, but I like his videos. Uh, it's basically just wrong about most things in my opinion. But uh, I don't think people should discount Snob just because he comes from a different era. In some ways, I feel like the era that he represents might even be better. I mean, I don't agree with his stances on shows, but you know, the idea of just being a character who wants to run around and fuck a bunch of shit up and be brutally honest while also having a kind of rude, mimetic, ironic persona, um, I think is fun.